Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. We are going to be doing a goddess style reading today. So really connecting into the frequency of the divine feminine energy. What do we need to see for our highest and best good at this time? I was told to also keep this one extremely simple. So I have no idea if it's going to be long or just very simple. I was told to only use two decks and we're only going to be pulling one card, like one goddess energy. We normally pull three goddesses, but I was told one and we're going to be pulling four supporting cards for that goddess. So I was given very clear instructions on how to do this reading today. And as you guys may know, if you're new here, you may not, but if you've been following me for a while, I always just do what I'm told. So however this reading is meant to come through is exactly what it needs to be. So let's see what goddess divine feminine frequency is coming through today to support our energy, to support the collective. What do we need to see for the highest and best good for all? And we are going to get one beautiful goddess, Inyana. Or Inanna. I say Inyana. That's just how I say it. Other people will say Inanna. And take it, leave it as it resonates. Inanna, the queen of heaven and earth. I, I have nothing to hide. I see and accept all that I am. Now, the goddess Inanna, when you feel into her frequency, she is one of our beautiful sovereign goddesses. She is also the embodiment of our sexual frequency. When we feel into the sacred templates, the sacred sort of sexual templates, um, Ishtar and Inyana are both sort of uh, these beautiful guides in that space. And Inyana is very connected also to the energy of Rishkagal and so the queen of the underworld. So I love the fact that we have Inyana coming through as the queen of heaven and earth, one who can kind of anchor into the two realms, one who can kind of be a conduit in the center point. But the gift with Inyana is that there is nothing to hide. There is a beauty in this energy. One of the practices we did for Mystery School last year was all about sort of energetically going through the initiation that Inyana had to go through when she went down to save her sister Arishkagal from the underworld. And it's basically at the seven different gateways or doorways or portals she had to remove an item of clothing until she was completely bare. And we do, did that as a practice in mystery school last year and really becoming more comfortable in who we are. But this is that's obviously on a very physical level, but we do this in a spiritual way and in a, an emotional way as well as stripping back, stripping down, like allowing ourselves to be fully authentic and leaving nothing like no more masks. It's time for the masks to completely come off. When I did, um, so I try to record all these obviously a day or two in advance. So on Monday this week, we did um, Cauldron, which is in Patreon. It's our weekly session that we come together and we do um, basically any activations, any thoughts, any stories. We kind of go into lots of different things around how to create the life of your dreams, like creating your dream life and facing any blocks and all that kind of stuff. And the big energy that we focused on this week was the imposter syndrome and what that looks like and how we shield ourselves, how we mask ourselves, how we're so afraid of being seen, how we go into people pleasing energy or perfectionism. It's like, if it's not perfect, I can't do it or whatever it might be. And Inyana for me is one of the goddesses that strips all of that away. There is nothing but truth. There is nothing but beauty when she is here. Like seeing yourself as innately beautiful, as innately fully divine and fully human. That's one of her sacred gifts as well, is that she is both of heaven and of earth. She is fully divine and fully human, but also knows how to journey into the underworld, who knows how to journey into those spaces. And what I, I just keep seeing is like strip those masks away, like all of the masks, all of the labels, all of the identities. And if you've been following me for a while, you'll know how much I hate labels. I never used to mind them so much, but I absolutely hate them now. I hate labels. I hate creating boxes for people to be put into. Every single label that you have for yourself is another layer of a box, is another, you know, another um, prong in your cage, whatever it might be. And we self do it. We self inflict that boxing, that caging, that restriction within our own life by adding labels to ourselves. And what if none of those labels were actually true? What if the opposite was true? What if everything we thought was true is actually not true and the complete opposite or something completely different was actually true? What would it be like to live just purely from the expression of your soul's authentic self as you know it in this moment? So without any masks, masks, without any shielding, can you accept where you are at this point in time exactly as you are without needing to change or fix anything? 
Can you love yourself that deeply? That doesn't mean that we don't want to change things about ourselves or that there aren't things we would want to improve, but can you still love yourself as you are completely? Even if your life is in a mess, even if your life feels like it's in turmoil, even if you're not exactly where you want to be physically, mentally, in any of those spaces, can you still love yourself unconditionally? Can you love yourself like you would a, a divine partner? Can you love yourself like you would a child? Can you love yourself like you would your best friend? Can you love yourself beyond all of that? Can you love yourself like the future version of you would love you now? The future version of you who has been through all of the challenges and who has stripped back and stripped back and stripped back and continued to, continues to strip away everything that is in denial of her authentic self. And I'm saying her because that's just how I channel, but take it as it resonates for you on your own personal journey. But can you like allow that to be your truth? Can you allow your divine self to be met as you are right now, regardless of the flaws? There's this beautiful card in this deck. I'm going to find it while I'm speaking. Let's see if I pick the right pile. This beautiful card. And the reason I want to get this out is because when we have a look at this desire to want to change, this desire to want to change, this desire to want to heal ourselves, this desire to want to, you know, um, fix, fix whatever is broken within our life. A lot of people say when we're not broken, you're not broken, there's nothing to fix. No, there might not be nothing to fix. You might not be broken, but we are still masked. We are shielded. We are armored. We are guarded. We are all of those things. We are 100% still holding on to things we don't need to be holding on to. So rather than seeing yourself as feeling broken, see it as that I'm still holding on to things that are inauthentic to myself. However, I love this card. I love this goddess energy. This is one of my favorite favorite energies ever is the goddess of never not broken what would it feel like instead of saying there's nothing broken that you need to fix and i see a lot of spiritual coaches say this you're not broken there's nothing you need to fix no but you might have trauma you need to heal from you might have people pleasing wounding that you need to get rid of you may have really 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 shitty boundaries that you need to fix and enforce and enhance and it doesn't mean you're broken it just means that you are not necessarily living your fully authentic self. However, what would it feel like to also then have the embodiment of what if I'm never not broken? And that in and of itself is the gift because the cracks are where the light gets in. It's my favorite Rumi poem quote is the cracks are where the light gets in. And I always go back to the, the Japanese. I can never say the, the name of it, but the Japanese art form where they get broken pieces of crockery and they and they um, weave it together with gold. It's a, uh, it starts with a K. Ugh, I can never, I can see it, but I can't, I can't, ugh, I can't think of the name. But how would it feel to see that? How beautiful is it that we're always breaking apart and see yourself cracking the old shell and stepping into the new, cracking the old shell, like this beautiful energy does here, cracking that old exterior. And if we're always breaking. How much more beautiful could that be versus I'm not broken. I don't need to be fixed. I'm not broken. I don't need to heal. I'm not broken. That that becomes a badge of honor as well. What if you could actually see yourself as what if I allowed everything that is not me, that is not my true authentic self that I have been holding on to, to mask in some way for other people's protection, other people's whatever it might be, people pleasing, perfectionism, wounding, humiliation, betrayal, like all of those things. The humiliation wound has come through really strongly over the past week or so. The session we did in Cauldron this week, I went very deep into humiliation. I went very deep into my personal journey with the humiliation wound. It is my biggest wound. It has come up very, very strong for me at the moment and it's something I'm actually working through and I'm going to be creating a meditation specifically for that. For those of us who have the humiliation wound, if you don't have it, it won't resonate. It's, it's, a, it's a gnarly little wound to have. But we went really deep into that particular wounding and what that looks like when it comes to people pleasing and perfectionism and feeling like we always have to mask ourselves to the world. And this is Anyana coming through to say, strip all of that bare, become the divine frequency that you are, allow yourself to become who you're always meant to be. And in order to do that, we need to break apart all of the things we've been holding on to that have been shielding us from our light. So I wanted to just find that card, bring that card forward for anybody who wants to see that, look at that. I'll leave. I'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. 
we're focusing on this one but I just really wanted to bring that particular expression through because the amount of times I hear spiritual quote unquote leaders thought leaders teachers anything again labels 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 spiritual gurus labels right all of these things whenever I see people are saying you're not broken you don't have to heal anything and it's like well then what are we doing <laughs> what are we working on why do I have to put this work in then if there's nothing to fix or change or heal right and that doesn't mean we're broken it just means that we have shit we need to deal with and that is okay and again we're just looking at a word and people get so fixated on the words they can't see the opposite and I love that card being, it was kind of the antidote of that because I was seeing that a lot a number of years ago. And this card to me is the antidote of that, is that rather than seeing this as not being broken, what if we are always breaking and how beautiful that is. We are breaking more of that human condition. We are breaking more of that construct that we've been holding. We are breaking more of the patterns of hiding ourselves, shielding ourselves, armoring ourselves against the world. Let's see what else Inyana has to share with us. Let's get four of these cards because I've only been told to get four. So <laughs> that's what we're going with. We have the Seven of Cups and I'm going to get all four. Seven of Cups. Okay, we only want four cards. We have the Page of Wands. Page of Wands. Been getting that a lot in client reads lately, Page of Wands. New inspiration, new ideas, new thoughts. I want to get all four before we go into the details too much. Let's get two more. Hmm. Three of Pentacles. Teamwork makes the dream work. And one more. And then we have the lovers. The lovers card has been coming through a lot lately, both in collective and personal reads. It's quite interesting in client reads and collective reads. There is a lot of uh, that energy sort of coming in right now. Okay, so we have the seven of cups, the page of wands, three of pentacles and the lovers energy. First, what I'm feeling is with the... This teamwork makes the dream work. For some reason, I'm going to the Three of Pentacles first. So we're going to go there. What I'm feeling is first and foremost, you don't have to do this alone. It is a challenging journey. It is a... Sometimes it's hard to just find like what's the next best step. And you don't have to do it alone. So the day this gets released, there should be on the meditation channel. Some of you may know that I've, I've created a new meditation channel. I'm trying to gradually add like a whole bunch of meditations in there and making this more of the reading channel and that one, they're more of the meditation channel. But by the time this reading comes out, there should be a brand new meditation that I've just loaded, which will be initiation with a high priestess. And the high priestess initiation is about just seeing what's next, like what you need to retrieve, what you need to learn. So when we say you don't have to do it alone, it doesn't always mean that you have to focus on the external and get support from the external, although that is highly valid. It can also be that you are being guided to work with some sort of energy or some goddess or some frequency or some guide in some way to also get support. And that's really that collaborative energy. And that's really how I'm feeling. This is like you are in co-creation with your life. You're in co-creation with spirit. You're in co-creation with whatever. But also if you are really struggling to understand the next part of your path, then get external help. You know, I do this work, obviously, that's part of what I do, but I always say I'm not for everyone. If I'm not the person to get help from, get it from somebody else. The most valuable thing that I have ever had in my entire journey is mentors. And I've had a mentor for almost every sort of journey within my life. So I had a mentor when I was learning my massage training. I had a mentor for my energy work. I had a mentor as a naturopath. I had a mentor when I was doing my goddess initiation work. I had a tantric mentor. Like I've had that many different mentors in my life because it just, for me, it's, it's a shortcut. It's, it's the, it's the cheat codes or the cliff notes. It's like, rather than having to read the whole book, it's like, I'll give you the cliff notes version of how to do it and accelerate it. Right. Um, I did this for a client recently. Uh, it's like what I, what took me six months to learn 
how to do for one specific thing. Um, what took me six months, I was able to show her in two hours. And it was like, if you want to like fast track, sometimes that is beneficial. That is, that is literally what I do for people is because I can see the, the energy, I can see the blockages, I can work with that and I can find the quickest pathway through that. So if you need support to be able to let go of the masks, let go of the wound or deal with the wounding that you're, you're currently going through, then by all means reach out, get support because the three of pentacles to me is teamwork. It's a teamwork energy. You don't have to do this alone. It doesn't have to always feel so fucking hard to do it alone. And I know what that feels like as well is when you're trying to do it all alone and it feels impossible. It feels like you're just battling like this uphill battle that never seems to want to end and getting guidance when you need it through those seasons to me is really really important so that's how I'm feeling that card coming through there the seven of the seven of cups energy though I'm just loving this energy it's like seven of cups is always our fantasy our dream world our decisions it's like which path do I choose one of them could be illusionary one of them could be fantasy one of them could be exactly what I desire one of them could have like a nasty little snake in it because there's always there's always freaking snake energy <laughs> on the seven of cup cards like it's just one of those cards I'm not a fan of snakes. Even though I work with snake energy, I have a snake tattooed on my arm, but I've done it in a way that I can handle because I just, I have such a phobia of snakes, but always, and I'm just seeing this like snake down there and it's just, and it, that's where my energy is going. That's where I'm being pulled. But the snake energy as well is our, it's our rebirth energy. So I'm definitely feeling really strongly guided to that energy of rebirth as well through the snake, shedding the old versions this doesn't necessarily feel so much about the fantasy card or choosing the right path. This more feels like shedding anything that isn't your aligned path. So when we have a look at the seven of cups and you have all of these choices in front of you, you know, you know, at a conscious level, you know, at a soul level, you know, in your heart that five out of those seven choices are not for you at all. You know it. You fucking know it. And yet, hmm, I wonder if I just give it a little bit more energy, maybe it will finally be the thing that will make it work, right? We're so conditioned to do that. We don't want to let go of these things. Either we've invested too much time into it, too much money into it, too much energy into it, or it looks too good to be true. Or, you know, and, and I see this in, say, relationships, with red flags. <laughs> and I see this with friends do this. It's like red flag, red flag, red flag. How many red flags? How many red flags? It's exactly the same pattern that you are repeating. It's another red flag, but this one will be different. This one will be different. And, you know, it goes into that whole, you know, when, when there's a pattern that repeats and I have, I have some people that go through this of the love bombing, right? The love bombing, the, it's such a narcissistic energy and it's a narcissistic trait. And it's such a funny thing, but this love bombing, and it's like, that's such a red flag for me, right? It's one of the biggest red flags you could ever see. And the people were like, but this time it'll be different. No, they're different. And it's like, haven't you learned your lesson? Haven't we learned our lesson? Just because there are seven choices does not mean that all of those choices should be given attention and energy and awareness. You know, five out of seven is shit. You know that two of the choices available to you could be aligned. You know one of them is the true path. You know the other might be the detoured path. Funnily enough, yes, I do hate snakes and I wear a snake ring. But I wear that for a reason as well. That that particular ring is always on my finger for a reason, as is this one here. Um, so, yes, I hate snakes. <laughs> I still wear one. But I only, ever read this, I only ever wear this one when I'm doing readings. So, go figure. Anyway, um, but what I'm really seeing with this is shedding the old patterns of behavior, shedding the old ways of doing things, shedding the old versions of how you're looking at those choices right don't get into fantasy land get into reality like anchor yourself down into what you truly desire and work towards that work towards stripping everything else bare this inyana card has to come first like this is our this is our anchoring card this is our guidance card everything that is not aligned to you becoming your most authentic self let that go there are only certain choices within that the other thing I'm hearing with this is sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. And I'm just feeling with this, it's like allow the mask to drop because people may say things to you and how can you allow yourself to be so authentically in who you are that they do that doesn't hurt you anymore? It's not an easy thing to do, but that's the other energy and message I'm getting with that seven of cups. 
with the Page of Wands, I'm really feeling this inspiration energy, this new inspired idea, new inspired thought. But in order to move forward into that, you need to let go of any of the old energies, any of the old outdated stories, any of the old outdated things. Let's just say you had an idea for a creative pursuit six months ago. And I, do, I feel like I'm telling myself this. You had this idea for this creative pursuit six months ago and you haven't fully given all of your energy and awareness to it. And now something new is landing. At some point, you have to either reach for the new thing and let go of the old thing or give the old thing some energy and some, some work. So feeling into what you're inspired to do at this point in time. Does something need to be put on the back burner? Does it need to be put you know, away for a little while? Why didn't you give it the energy that maybe you wanted to give it? Did you just not have time? But this really feels like you can't like you can't always activate every single idea and thought and desire that you have. You have to pick and choose sometimes, but those ones that you can feel them resonating in your whole body, in your whole being, those are the ones that we need to focus on. But again, when you've gone through initiation with Inyana, you feel this stripping bare. You feel this stripped down. And that there is like, this is my most authentic self. And as my most authentic self, now I can receive these new insights. Now I can receive this new energy. And there is nothing that is going to prevent me now from stepping into that because I have no hold on the old beliefs and old identities that are coming through there. And I love the, this lover's card. It kind of goes against the entire, the rest of the deck. It's really quite an interesting card, but I do love this particular lover's card because this is Shiva and Pavati. And Pavati to me is the goddess of devotion. And so when we really feel into their journey, their story, it is all about devotion. It is all about staying the course, staying really, really centered on what it is you desire and not deviating from that. But it's, and so Pavati is to me the, the highest expression of devotion. And when we really feel into that, devoting ourselves to becoming the fullest expression of self, devoting ourselves to becoming the absolute highest version of us, allowing ourselves to break through all of the old conditions, allowing ourselves to get the support we need so we can become that version of self so that we can then actually align to the highest. If you didn't see yesterday's reading, we spoke about this a lot because the lover's card came out in yesterday's reading as well. And that was all about how we become the version of, of us, the highest version of us that then aligns to the highest version of our divine counterpart. And that's what Pavati did. She she dedicated herself. She was so devoted to her mission that she dedicated herself to become that the, the, the version of her that she needed to be to align with Shiva. And again, that's like a story and you can go into that a little bit deeper if you want to go into that. But really feeling into this energy here, this to me is the, the journey of devotion. This is the journey of awakening this is the journey of moving through all of the layers so you can actually have that blossoming into the lotus like moving through all of the patterns of behavior and all of that stark stagnant energy all of that muddy energy that we're going through stripping ourselves bare so we can be like reborn as this beautiful light version of self and that's really what this is all about so really really interesting um reading today because we were told to keep it very simple i didn't know if it was going to be short long whatever so as always, take the messages as they resonate, leave whatever doesn't. If you do want support, if you feel like you need support on your journey, reach out. Um, you know, we do one-on-one -on -one sessions, we do readings, there's mentoring, there's lots of different things. And there are also many, many activations and courses that you can also go deeper into if you want to sort of journey in that way as well. So see what feels the most aligned. But if you're really struggling and you're feeling like your walls are closing in a little bit, for some reason I'm saying this. There might be someone out here that really needs to hear this. But if you feel like your walls are closing in, you feel suffocated in your journey and you feel like you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, reach out, get support either from me or from someone else, but get support, get help to move through that because the quicker you can get out of that state, the more easeful the rest of the path becomes. Sending you all so much love, divine souls, and I'll connect with you all again very soon.